Well, praise God. Welcome to Pharaoh Ministries. I'm your host, Jeff Lancaster, and we are blessed to be releasing this word tonight that God gave me. And, and I just want to say that, you know, God is working right now to enlighten us, to fill us with his dunamis power that we can do the works that he has ordained for us to walk in from the very beginning of time. And to do that, we have to shed off our circumstance. We have, there's, there's things that we've got to break through. And he is the God of breakthrough. And I want to, God gave me this word. I was, I was, uh, just having a nice Christian talk with someone and God, there's this dynamic that happens when two spirit-filled people get together and then God like energizes it somehow that there's this dunamis release and in the spirit all of a sudden he just is able to download and, and, and as I got this word, uh, he just started to build on it. So I want to talk about the Lord of Breakthrough tonight. So we live here in western Washington, uh, just outside of Seattle. And the Cascade Mountains are just to the east of us here. And, uh, and, and you may not, you might be on the east coast, you might be in Africa, you might be in Yakima on, in eastern Washington or Montana where it's more arid, or California. Uh, but the, the deal is, is that we get rain. We get ample amounts of rain. And there are days when the clouds come in and in the morning, the mist and the dew, and it's just kind of miserable out. Even though we've had this wonderful summer, uh, Sunday morning was just kind of, because it rained all night and it was wet and it was cool. And, uh, and, and, and yet you couldn't really see there was a fog and it wasn't smoke from the, the recent fires that we've had. It was a fog and it was this clinging, cool fog. And I uh, had made an, a, a time to go see a friend in eastern Washington. Now to get there, you have to go over Snoqualmie Pass. You have to go over the Cascades. So you're driving up and you're going up and you're going up and it's still just dank and there's rain on the windshield and there's mist. And I'm thinking, man, this is just not fun. And then I thought, well, you know what? I'm just going to call somebody. And so I did. And then the Holy Spirit started to quicken this thing in me, quicken this word. And he said, you know, you're going through the clouds, you're going through the mist, you're going through what this engulfing limitation that is in your life. It's all you can see. It's, you can just see the limitation of your finances, of your sickness, of your, uh, your, your relationship, of, of whatever that thing is. And it looks like it's completely blotting out the sun. You know it's there, but you can't see it, you can't feel it, there's no warmth from it. And then you break through, and the clouds disappear, and the sun shines bright. And you, you it was only 60 miles, 50 miles, not even that. And all of a sudden, it was just dynamic. The brightness of the sun, I had to put on my sunglasses. You know, you come out of the mist and the and the damp and the rain and the and the, the the fog, and then you break through in Jesus' name. You break through. And and God does that in our lives if we're willing to move. You won't break through if you sit in your armchair. You won't break through if you're sitting in your pew. You won't. It takes an act of faith. It takes momentum. It takes moving where God is moving and where he's directing and where he's leading. It, that, it can be a dark, blotted out day where there seems to be no light and, but the minute you, and it might be take some effort you might be hiking through that and the physical effort to get up that mountain but when you get to that place all of a sudden there's something that happens there that that the clouds disperse 
I don't, I don't even know. They just, they just disperse and you break through into a clear revelation of what is God has purposed in you. The problem is, is when we're down in that valley, a lot of times we can't see the clear purpose that God has formed in us and put in us and stored in us for his glory. And he wants us to get to a place that we, boom, do, do we disperse the clouds? No. No. We just have to go in the right direction. We just have to go in the right direction. 1 Chronicles 14, verses 8 through 17. This captures King David. King David, uh, he has just been anointed king. And it starts out, when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David. The David heard of it and went out against him. Now the Philistines had come and made a raid in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of God. So now there's the first clear. That's the first clue. The first step. The first act of faith is not to trust in your own wisdom. Not to trust in your own understanding. But to inquire of God. So what does he say? He says, shall I do what? Go up. Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you give them into my hand? And the Lord said to him, go up and I will give them into your hand. So oftentimes, when... We're in a place of oppression or we're in a place where we can't see or we're in a place that's closed in. We're in a place that's fenced in. We're, we're, a, we're feeling like we're a, either about to be attacked or under attack. It is a good idea. It is a good method. It is a good revelation to go up inquire of the Lord and move and God will give you even the prayer to pray for the moment. David, it wasn't some fantastic revelation. It was, well, should I go up or should I stay? It's the old uh, 60s rock song. Should I stay or should I go, right? You know, but, but David is like, hey, I'm here, I'm in a secure place. I'm in a fort. I'm in a secure place. What do you want me to do? And I have found that time and time and time and time again, when I have been in a place where I am, it is beyond me. It is beyond my strength. It is beyond my understanding. It is beyond my wisdom. It is beyond me. I, that is the place it is always good to ask God, well, Lord, she's blind. What do you want me to do? Boom. And he answered me. Well, Lord, he's never spoken a word in his life. What am I supposed to do? Well, Lord, she's in a wheelchair. Oh, you're not giving me a vision. You're giving me a word. Are you sure you want me to say that? Yes, I want you to say this. And he emphasizes things in a way that propels you into the destiny that he has for you. And blind eyes open and mute little boys speak and wheelchair bound women get up and dance. And you just look at it in amazement that God positioned you to be in that place at that time because there's nothing of you that did any of that. You just got to be there. But you did one thing. You went with him. You went with him. You made a decision to go for him, with him, on that mission trip, on that trip to Mexico, uh, to that church, 
to do this, to do that. You, it was a stretch for you. It took faith for you. It didn't feel comfortable for you. You got out of your surrounding. You got out of your comfort. You got out of your easy chair. You got out of your enabling fog. <laughs> and you got into a place that only God could provide the solution. Only God could provide the solution. He could always, he's the only one that can provide the answer, the healing, the anointing, the, the, the deliverance, the, the whatever it is, whatever lack that was there, God broke through the clouds. Listen to this as it goes on here. He says, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you give them into my hand? And the Lord said to him, go up and I will give them into your hand. And he went up to Baal Perzim. And David struck them down there, and David said, God has broken through my enemies by my hand like a bursting flood. <laughs> like rivers of living water rushing up out of my very belly into the world and breaking through like a bursting flood. God has broken through my enemies, my limitations, my fog, my easy chair, my comfort. He has broken through to create in me a dynamic life that reflects and gives glory back to him. Therefore, the name of that place is called Baal Perazim. 2 Samuel talks about this as well. It says 2 Samuel 5.20, because the Chronicles and Samuel, they kind of parallel each other. So David went to Baal Perazim, and David defeated them there. And he said, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like the breakthrough of water. Therefore, he called the name of that place Baal Perazim. What does it mean, Baal Perazim? Literally, it means master of breakthroughs. See, that's who we go with. That's who we serve. That's who partners with us. The master of breakthroughs. Oh no, he's not the, the he's not the third stringer of breakthroughs. He's the master. He is the master of breakthroughs. If you need a breakthrough, there's an anointing Tonight, there's an anointing on YouTube. There's an anointing when you hear the word, you receive the word, you say, I is for me. I need a breakthrough. Who needs a breakthrough? Right? Yeah. You need a COVID breakthrough? I got a breakthrough for you. Mm -hmm. He's the master of breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. His name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's not Jeff. His name is Jesus. He's the master of breakthroughs. You say, well, now wait, that's a great, that's a great biblical analogy, but that was 2,000 years ago, Jeff. I mean, how, how is God, how, did, how, I mean, is there something else to, to, you know, corroborate, corroborate that? I mean, because we judge scripture by scripture. Well, hey, let's look at Matthew 7, verses 7 through 8. It says, keep knocking. Keep asking, seeking, and knocking. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Therefore, whoever, or everyone, not for everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Not one thing there says sit here like this, arms folded, and wait for it to happen. No, it said knock. It said ask. Mm -hmm. It said seek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it requires an actionable faith. Faith is not dead. Faith is motivating you and propelling you into your destiny. You know, I, 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 I'll just give you just a little testimony. I, 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 I'm, 
I'm this guy working construction. I have a tile company. I'm, I play a little golf. I've got a good wife. I got a happy life. I got a little farm. I'm busy. I go to church. But somewhere in the midst of this, about 20 some years ago, there is just this hole inside of me. There's this hole that no matter what I plug in there, I can't seem to fill this hole. Now, I'm spirit-filled, tongue-talking, Bible-walking kind of guy. But there's this hole. An emptiness. There's this, I know there's got to be what? More. 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 Something. Something. More, more. If this is all there is... So I, one day I, I get really, I, I get pretty, I get pretty adamant here. I mean, I get pretty distressed mm -hmm. about where I am and where Christ is mm -hmm. in me, in my life, in my midst. This is not the prayer you want to pray if you want to sit in your easy chair. If you just want to go to church on Sunday, have a few friends and go to the potluck. This is not the prayer you pray. You don't pray, God, if this is all there is, I'll just go out and play golf with a few people. I will tell them about you because this, what I'm seeing, is not what's in this book. This book, the Bible. This is not in the Acts. That's right. This is not the the. The Acts of the Apostles, this is not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This, what I'm experiencing, is not this. Because no. that was dynamic. That was God. Unexplainable God. Mm -hmm. Mysterious. Wonderful. Amazing. Yes, it is. Bewildering. God. Life Unexplainable <laughs> God. Within 30 days, a friend invited me to a church that was in revival. Mm -hmm. I went by myself because everybody else had an appointment. Mm -hmm. And when I went, he filled in the blanks. He filled in the blanks. I saw a woman. I was standing in the back because I didn't want to get too close. You know, I don't know anybody at this church. And they're all in the front. And they all got their hands up in there. And they're all worshiping. And it's not the way it is in my church. But now here, I wanted something different. I needed something different. I didn't know what it was. But when I'm seeing something that's different, oh my gosh, I have an opinion about what that looks like. <laughs> sure, we all do. I don't want to get too close to that. I mean, what if it's not God? What, but what if it is? What if it is? <laughs> what if it is? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I thought I knew what I didn't have was not right, but I didn't know what I needed, so I, but what did I do? I actually got up enough courage to go to a different church that I'd never been to or not, didn't know a soul by myself. Good for you. Have you tried that one? That's yeah. yeah, some people here have. It's not easy. It requires doing something. It's an act of faith, actually. And yet God met me there. And that night, I saw a 60-year-old woman that when she was 8 years old had scarlet fever, had all, the, all but 80% of her hearing gone in one ear, and over 50% of her hearing loss in her other ear, take out her hearing aids, and was completely healed. And I knew her because I just kept going for the next, you know, number of years. Completely healed. To this day, completely healed. Did anyone pray for her? Nope. God just, boom. In the midst of worship, she just collapsed and sobbing and laughing and, and wonder. And amazement and and it was so emotional that when the pastor grabbed a mic and took her up on the stage she couldn't talk he had to explain to the rest of us what God had just said <laughs> she, was, she broke it broke it up man 
<laughs> if you'd had a hearing loss that severe mm -hmm. for 50 years plus of your life and your ears just opened Boom. in the midst of his presence. Now, I don't, I, she just heard about these services. <laughs> See, she heard. <laughs> and then faith rose up and she didn't know anybody there. Jesus. She just went one night on a Thursday night. Who goes on a Thursday <laughs> night? Right? I was there. I was in the back. And it changed my life. I said, that's what I've been missing. That's what I need to see. That's the God of this Bible. Amen. That's this, that Jesus. Yeah. Who was and is and is to come. Amen. You know what I noticed about your story? She heard and then she heard. She heard, and she, she heard. has will be given more. more. Right. And she and she went. And she went what? Seeking what she did not know. She didn't necessarily go to get her healing restored. She meant to get more Jesus. Yeah. We got to talk over a few years, and it was amazing how many, how the intersections of people's lives that get into a service where God is manifesting his presence in a dynamic way. And people will say, well, well, you know, come to my church. We got God there. <laughs> yes, you do. But you know what? Sometimes God just pours out a little bit more. <laughs> you know, he loves you. He's got some water. He's pouring it out. But over here, he's dumping. I mean, he's got a fire hose. You know, I, I don't know why. I don't know why. I just know that I got to be in that place. What, did God speak and, to you and to go was, there that night? And it was saturation. Did God speak to you to go there that night? Or did you I just go? went. You just went. God I didn't, didn't know anything about it. I didn't know the pastor. I didn't know the ministry. I didn't know any a soul that went to that church. And I was very, it, you know, it, it was a very awkward <laughs> thing to go. And it was an awkward or, or different service than anything I'd ever experienced. And yet I couldn't leave because there was something going on. And then when Valerie got healed, wow. Mm. You couldn't have pried me out of that place. <laughs> it was amazing. You have to move. See, it takes some movement. It takes a step. It takes some forward momentum. It takes an inquiry. It takes listening and, and, and acting on a word. On a word. For me, it was a youth pastor that was changing churches, uh, to going to a different church, and said, wow, we had the strangest thing. We visited a friend of mine from ministry college, and they said the church was in revival, and we went. That's all he said. And his wife goes, yeah, you know, um, you know, it was a little different. They had like flags, but you know, I think it was okay. Cause you know, we, we're going to judge everything, right? <laughs> let's not judge everything. Let's just, you know, let's just find Jesus. Let's just knock. Let's just seek. Let's, let's, you know, let's ask. If you're asking for God. If you're seeking God, if you know what God's going to show up in your life, God's going to show up in your life. Hey, listen, listen to what Isaiah, the prophet, in Isaiah 60 <coughs> verses 1 through 22. This is what it says. There's a kind of a famous scripture, but but I think it's very appropriate. Arise. So you got to do something. You got to get up. Yes. Arise, shine. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness all the peoples. You know what I was talking about? Being in a cloud, being in a dark place, getting up out of the wetness and everything, and then breaking through. Darkness shall cover the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon who? Upon Merlin? Upon Rob? Upon Shirley? No, uh, Tony? No, upon, you know, on you. The Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you and you. 
His glory is going to be seen upon you when you do this. Hmm. Lift up your eyes. Oh, excuse me, I skipped one. And the nations shall come to your light. I don't know about you, but how many of you had nations come to your light? You know, I've been invited to Mexico, to Italy, to Kenya. For a guy that was in his 40s before he even got into ministry, that, you know, I mean, who am I? that you are my, I got invited here to Merlin's. I've been invited at church conferences and prophetic conferences here in, in, in the U.S. and stuff. But you know what? Here's the deal. Nations will come to see what? To see your light. You got something. What? What do you got? You got what he put on you. His glory. His His light on you, in you, out of you. They will come to see your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see they all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar and your daughter shall be carried on the hip and then you shall, shall see and be radiant. What? Your heart shall thrill and exult because of the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of nations shall come to you. What Where is that from, Isaiah what? That is Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 22. Wow. Uh, that's a word. It's powerful. You know, that might be more than you can handle, but I can tell you that you can do something. You can arise. You can get up and go after. You can arise. Say, here I am, Lord. Use me. Arise. Get up. Say, here I am. Woo! I can barely stand. I can barely stand. Well, what about the other side of the story? What about the converse? What, what about if you're not in a wet, cloudy place? What, what, if, what, if it's a, what if it's a desert place? And you feel like there's nothing. You've been abandoned. It is dry, baked. It is just completely desolate in your life. And there's people here that feel like that. There's areas of our lives that are just completely, they're not clouded over and soggy. They are desolate. Wow. Isaiah 43, verse 19. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Jesus. Behold, I am doing a new... Say it. Behold, he is doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing today. He's doing a new thing in you. If you'll go after him, if you'll arise... He's doing a new thing. It's not the same old thing. It wasn't what he did yesterday. And the countless days before that, you're going to walk into a new thing. But I want you to arise. I want you to look up. The, the, the brightness of his glory will descend on you when you rise up and you look towards the heavens and you say, Jesus I'm desperate. Jesus, I need this breakthrough. Jesus, I'm in a desert. Jesus, help me. He's about to do a new thing. This is what he says. Now, everybody say now. 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 Yeah, now. Not tomorrow. Now it springs forth. Now it springs, now forth. It springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Oh my goodness, there is so much God here right now. Do you not perceive it? Do you not? Do you have ears to hear? Do you have eyes to see? That it just takes, you know, God works. You know, I'm driving up this pass. I'm driving out of the dark and the, the clouds. And, and all of a sudden, I've given this person a word. And I saw the word. I saw it. I saw the clouds disperse. I saw the brightness of his glory. Because I what? I looked up. I got pictures on my phone of before, middle, and after. I was like, this is amazing. I mean, you don't recommend driving and taking pictures with your phone. But 
thank God for autopilot, right? These new cars, right? But I mean, I'm telling you, you, you know, God will demonstrate. He will, he will, he will orchestrate the heavens mm. so that you get a revelation of his word and, a, and the ability to take that revelation and translate it to his people. Mm. He wants to do a new thing in you. He wants to do a new thing in you. And now, <laughs> and now, it springs forth. It's springing forth in me. It's springing, you know, there are seasons. Mm. Do, you, do you think he wants to leave you in this I can't go to church wear your mask COVID ridden world where you are oppressed and depressed and the, and the world mocks you and political divisions try to control you and keep you and, and under the fear that you might somebody transmit something to somebody because you're caring, kind, impassioned Christian person. You wouldn't want anybody to be in danger. So what? But now it springs forth. Out of the midst and in the desert or in the soggy bottom, you know, and now, and it, you know what it says? It goes on, it says, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Mm. I don't care what wilderness that you, I, anybody, I don't know of anybody here, but I mean, it, it, you know, have you ever been hiking and got off the trail? Have you ever been hunting? You know, my dad and brother were avid hunters. And uh, we live in, a, in an area where foliage grows quite nicely here. And if you get off the trail, or you just see a glimpse of what you were hunting, and it takes you off the trail, and your, and your vines and the nettles and the the sticker and everything and, the, and the, the deadfall trees and everything. And pretty soon you don't have to go very far and you're like, whoa, how do I get back? Mm. Well. And in the desert, have you ever been in the desert when you, I, I used to hunt in some arid places. It all looks the same. It does. One piece of sagebrush looks just like the other one and that cactus and that mountain looked just like the one I just went by. It all looks the same. And there is nothing there. Yeah. What would you hunt in the desert? Yeah, uh, rabbits. Another story. Another story. <laughs> but, but he makes a way in the wilderness. He makes rivers in the desert. You know, you just got to go to eastern Washington. And you're rolling along through Vantage and you go through some farm country where they irrigate. And then you get to this place just out of Ellensburg where it's, you're going down. and you, It's just desert. There, it's the old sheep country over there. And there's nothing there but sagebrush and coyotes. And, a, you know, I mean, there's just nothing there. I mean, it's desolate. It's rocks and sand. And there's cactus out there. I've walked out there through that area. There's cactus out there. And then you come onto the river. Oh my goodness. The mighty Columbia cuts right through this arid land. It's amazing. And then there's wildlife and, you know, all this stuff going on. And, and uh, there's trees all of a sudden, you know. And, and, but that's what God can do in your life. He's doing a new thing. Mm -hmm. He's making a new path. But you gotta, you gotta get up. You gotta arise. You gotta arise. You gotta allow faith to operate because he's doing a new thing. Ephesians 3.20 says this, Now to him who is able 
to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or think. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I mean, think about that one. According to his, to the power, wait, oh, wait, I said, that, I'm quoting this wrong. According to the power at work within us. Okay, now wait. So if I don't have Jesus in my life, what power do I have? Nothing that he can work with. But when I receive Christ and I receive the power, which is the living Holy Spirit that dwelleth in me, according to that power from on high, he can do exceedingly abundantly more than all. Not just a little bit that I could ask, but more than all that I could ask or think. You know, and I just want to challenge you because I, I, I have, a, you know, I, I am a living testimony to this word. I was going along, I asked God, I want more. There's got to be more. And it was my mantra. I'm not happy with this. I'm unsatisfied. Show me more. Show me more and I'll do what you want me to do. Show me more and I'll go over the whole earth. Show me the more. And he showed me the more. And in that, he did above and beyond all I could have ever asked or thought because it was so far out of the context of my mind that I would ever be in ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. I, 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 it, it was beyond me. I, I, I could not even conceive of it. It was beyond all. I don't know. There are things, see the problem is, you can't see what he sees. You don't know the plans that he's made for you. Plans to prosper you. Not to harm you, but to, to prosper you. What? Prosper you with some cheddar cheese in your wallet? No. He wants to prosper you in the presence and in the glory and in the image and in the, the giftings of his son, Jesus Christ. He wants to prosper you, Mary. And he wants to take you into a new level, a new place, something you've never done before. It's not what you know, what you can think, or what you can imagine. It's more than that. And you have to follow that leading. And where that comes from, I don't know. But God is about to take you. This is for you right now, right here. He's about to take you into another level where his glory will sit on you. Amen. Wow. Maybe you feel like you're surrounded by mountains. Maybe you feel like you're hedged in. All you can see is the mountains and it doesn't look like there's any way out. They're like giants surrounding you. Isaiah 40 verses 1 through 31. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for her sins. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places as a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I, I, you know, I, I don't know what your limitation is. I don't know what's holding you back. I, I don't think most of us know. We have to get 
beyond what we know and get into what he knows. And he's the one who makes the mountains low. And he's the one who raises the valleys up. And he's the one who takes the rock-strewn path and clears it out like a giant bulldozer and makes it the Lord's highway, the King's highway, that you can walk on flat ground. Then he puts a river in it. Oh, my goodness. He can, he can remake you. He can remake you. He can take all that you've done in the past and all that you've known and he can change it in a dynamic Jesus thing that is so beautiful and so powerful and has so much grace on it. And you just got to hold on to his hand in that moment. He will lead you. You see mountains. He sees a pathway. You see a desert. He sees a river. Hmm. You see soggy bottom Snoqualmie where I live. When I was a kid on the ski bus, I would drive through there on the bus I never saw a good day. I was said, I, I thought as a teenager, who would ever live here? <laughs> I did. I actually said those things. In my mind, I was like, who would ever live here? This is the most horribly depressing place I've ever seen. It rains all the time. I live in a rainforest. Of course it rains all the time, but it's also beautiful. And it gives me an opportunity to have a revelation when the clouds disperse at the top of Snoqualmie Pass and the sun breaks through and then God gives you what? He gives, this is what I live for. This is the revelation of God on high impacting us, changing us, the dunamis power that reflects his glory and touches you and changes you. And, 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 and we just gotta, we've just got to rise to the occasion and know that God is, it's a new day. It's a new word. It's a new time. Arise and shine. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen on you. Wow. There is nothing like it. The glory of the Lord rising on you. There is nothing like that. There's no commercial out there on TV that's going to... There's no NBA star. There's no NFL player. There's no sporting event. There's no beauty pageant. There's no intellectual award. There's nothing like the glory of the Lord rising on you. Because in that, all things, all things are possible. All things are possible. Psalms 91 says it this way, verses 3 and 4. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. Mm -hmm. That's good. His faithfulness. Yeah. Is. His faithfulness right. is the shield and the buckler. That's so good. Man. The buckler is this little tiny shield. <laughs> we go on here, deflect. The, the big shield was like a guy would actually carry the shield in those days. He would be the shield bearer. But the buckler was on you. It was like like what you'd see more like a, uh, almost a like a, a little small one, yeah. uh, like a gladiator would have. Yeah. yeah. First, yeah. Deflects the close blows. Mm -hmm. God knows where, when, and why you are. 
Have you ever thought of that about yourself? Yeah. I think sometimes we've asked ourselves, why? Where am I? When am I? When is a big, a big one. When for Jeremiah twenty nine <laughs> eleven. When, when, when. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Oh my God! Did you know that God is declaring over you? Yes, yeah, He says, you know, when you talk to Him, He says, I know the plans I have for you. Before you were in your mother's womb, I called you a prophet to the nations. Oh my goodness. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. You can hope in him. He is your future because when we die, and we will die, we will rise, and we will be with him for eternity. It is the hope of glory. It is one of the covenants, the tenets of our faith, that we have a future and a hope with him. And he declares that he knows the plans for you today, this hour, tomorrow, next week. He has plans for you. That's right. Arise. Get a hold of the plan that he has for you. Don't let it go. Don't let it go. I mean, are you going to break through in the strength of Merlin? Are you going to break through in the strength of your pastor? Are you going to break through in just your own strength? Yeah, you, know, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. No, he is the Lord, the master of breakthrough, and you need him. Micah 2.13 says this, He who opens the breach goes before them. They break through and they pass the gate going out by it and their king passes on before them, the Lord at their head. See, he, he opens the breach. He opens the way. He makes a way. When there was a solid wall, when there was a solid army, when there was a, a, a deficit in your bank account, when there was a, a relationship that no matter what you did, you could not restore. He opens the breach. How many times? He goes before you. <laughs> and they break through and pass the gate going out by it. Mm. And their king passes on before them, the Lord at their head. Mm. See, he's going to lead you. He's going to do all the work. He's with you. He's partnered with you. Psalms 23, 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yes. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort. Yeah. Isaiah 48, 17. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. Mm -hmm. He leads you. What? In Psalms 23. He leads you where? But still waters. He leads you into green pastures. He leads you. Where? Up the mountain? He leads you down to the river. He leads you. Revelation 7, 17. I mean, we're going from the front of the Bible all the way to the back. Because God has one message for you tonight. You're about to break through. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to the springs of living water. Mm. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Mm. Wow. That's exciting. You know, <laughs> he, he says the same thing. And he says it so beautiful. We did that worship song. He's the artist and the potter. We're the canvas and the clay. He's writing this love song to you wow. tonight. And he says, you're about 
to break through. Amen. He breaks off every limitation. He breaks off every, you know, most of our limitations are right here. Our own self-perceived designs and ideas. Oh, I'm just this. Oh, I'm just that. Oh, I could never be that. I could never do, I could, no, no. See, he's not the author of fear. He's not the author of timidity. He's not the author of limitation. You do not have a spirit of fear or timidity, but one of what? Power, <laughs> love, his, and a sound mind. His power. His power that's in you, that breaks yeah. off the limitation, mm -hmm. that stomps fear under its heel, that, that chases timidity out of the room. Acts 12, verses 7 and 8. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him. Now, that, that is either terrifying or really exhilarating. <laughs> and a light shone in the... See, a light. The glory of the Lord is upon you. Arise and shine. A light shone in the cell, and he struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, dress yourself, put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. That's true. And they walked out of the prison. Oh, man, that's a good verse. Oh, wait, wait. So what happened there? He was asleep. He was in prison. He was sentenced to death. But see, the Romans didn't know the plans that God had for Peter. The Romans didn't know that he was going to write a bunch of the gospel. He didn't know that he was going to be evangelist. They didn't know that he was going to preach the. He didn't know. Peter didn't know. And Peter didn't know. Why? Because he couldn't see it. <laughs> It's beyond his imagination. It's beyond his expectation. It's beyond what he could, what? What was that scripture? Whether he could think or imagine. An angel woke him up and the chains of limitation, the chains of death, the chains of men, the chains fell off and they walked out of the prison together. I want you know, this. I'm telling you, man. I'm just. I'm just. Oh, I the, the the presence of God on me right now is just like I just. I'm just burning up over here. Just burn, burn, burn. You know, in the midst of all this, there's going to be the quiet naysayers, the whispers. Mm -hmm. Well. That Tony, who does she think she is? <laughs> that Merlin, who, I mean, come on now. I know there was people. That Jeff Lancaster, well, well, who does he think he is? I mean, who is he anyway? Did he even go to Bible college? How can he be a youth pastor? How can he go on a mission trip? What makes him so special? How come he got invited to the conference? I don't, I, you know, blah, 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 blah. Look at all. Numbers, 1330. Nope. But Caleb, now listen to this. This is important. This is, good. this is not Jesus. Numbers 13, verse 30. 30. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. Then the men who had gone up with him said, Well, we're not able to go up against the people for it. They're stronger than we are. Somebody didn't get the revelation. Somebody didn't get the message. But did, did Jesus just walk into the room and shut up their mouths like Daniel and the lions did? No, Caleb quieted them. Shut up. Shut up your mouth. Can you please shut up your mouth? We are well able to do this. Now, follow me here. Fast forward 40 years. Caleb 
Joshua gives Hebron to Caleb as an inheritance. And it says this, and I didn't write the full scripture out. I apologize. I think it's in, um, I think it's in Samuel. But uh, he says, Then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh the Kezanite, said to him, You know the word. I used to have this sister. She'd stand up in church when the preaching was good. And, oh, you know that's right. You, you know it. You know the word. See, that's the problem. You know the word. So you should know that that's right. You know the word. He says, you know the word which the Lord spoke to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me, Joshua, in Kadesh. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. What was his word? Oh, we can take it. <laughs> Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold... The Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years in the wilderness. And now, here I am, this day, 85 years old. And I am as strong on this day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard it in that day how the Anakim, the giants, were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. Where are the giant killers? Where are the Bob Brotlands that are 85 and older, that are serving the Lord God, that have the same strength that they did 45 years ago to bring the word in this message on YouTube, wherever they are, go on mission trips. Where are the Caleb's? Right here. There they are. <laughs> right here. As an inheritance. As an inheritance. As an inheritance for our children and our children's children. As an inheritance. Because God is faithful. Doesn't matter what it looks like right now. That's right. Doesn't matter. I, I'm telling you, there was people that, oh, that Jeff, boy, he's a crazy one. Yeah, Look yeah. out. Joanne, are you praying, Joanne? Uh, Bertha, Grandma Bertha, are you praying? I mean, somebody had to be. They were praying women in my family. <laughs> and it was a miracle. Uh -huh. I mean, God somehow took me out of whatever and brought me in to that day that I walked in that revival church. And saw something that changed the course of my life forever. Mm -hmm. And the course of your lives. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't know how much I've changed anyone's life. But I know that God in me has changed people. I know that God in me has mm -hmm. elevated people. I know that God in me has propelled people. I know that God in me has pushed people out the door. <laughs> You know, get them on the path. <laughs> get them encouragement, they call it, I guess. <laughs> Exodus 15, 17. And you will bring them in and plant them in the mountains of your inheritance, mm. in the place, O Lord, which you have made for your own dwelling. See, he called Caleb to that place because he said, it's my place. It's my land. I'm giving you giving you this, take care, and because he was faithful, because he proclaimed it, because he said we could do it because God, he believed God. He just believed God. What is that? Faith. Faith. He just believed God. And at 85, he led 
the tribe of Judah. See, that's what people forget. It was the tribe of Judah. The tribe that means praise. He led the praise up the mountains and defeated the giants. That's right. He led the tribe of praise. Wow. Uh, you better get on your worship. You know, you just better. I don't know if you like to sing. I don't care if you like to clap. I don't care if you like to dance. But you might want to try it. I wouldn't judge it. You might just want to try it. There was a day when I was like, oh, I don't know about that. Raising one hand. Oh, Lord. I raised two hands. I, I don't know about that. Oh, Lord. I'm standing up in the pews. Oh, Lord. I'm dancing at the altar. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. That just might be way, way, way. But tr you know what? It might just be God. He might just change your heart. He might just lead you up the mountain. Wow. Like he did the tribe of praise. Caleb. Deuteronomy 4, verse 20. I'm going to finish with this. Verse 21. Verse 20. Deuteronomy 4, verse 20. But the Lord has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace. Wow, that's good. Out of Egypt mm. to be his people and inheritance as you are this day. See, you're the inheritance iron of the Lord. Lord. You're the inheritance. He wants to put his glory on you. He wants to lead you out of darkness and into light. He wants to make you as light as he is. Jesus, Jesus. He wants to fill you with revelation and power and mercy and grace and love and kindness and tenderness. He wants to elevate you outside of your own thinking, your own imagination into the works that he planned for you, mm -hmm. the calling that he foreordained for you, the things that he imagines for you. Oh, he has a plan. <laughs> That's so much fun. Maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you just listen to this whole thing and you're like, wow, this Jesus guy, he, I, don't, I don't understand. I don't I, it's about a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's about a relationship between you and the one who made you. Mm -hmm. And if that's you, you just 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 pray. You know, if you can pray with me. You can pray in your own. Just Lord Jesus, I need you. I need you. There's been something missing in my life, Lord. Yes. Fill it with you. Yes, fill it with you. Fill it all with you. Forgive me of my wrong thinking, my wrongdoing, my 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 bad words. Just get just forgive me and make me a new creature in Christ. Make me new in you. Let me be born again. That's what to be made new, to be born again. Born just make me new again today. Brand new today, Father, that I can see where you want. Let me rise up into the calling that everything that I've known, that I don't settle for that, that I rise up into the plans that you have for me, plans to prosper me, not to harm me. I pray if you've invited Jesus into your heart, that is your future. That is your future future and a hope yes. that every day will be a new day. Mm -hmm. That every day can be an adventure. And it doesn't matter what the limitations, it doesn't matter the height of the mountains or the depth of the valleys or the roughness of the terrain or the wetness of the clouds or the dryness of a desert. He will be the river, the bulldozer. He will be the leveler. He will be the filler up. He will do all those things. Yeah. Whatever the need is, he is more than enough. Thank you, Lord. Pray this in Jesus' name for you, for everyone. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.